Hi guys, this video is to teach you what the sign rule says and how to prove it. This is examinable in an exam, so they can ask you to prove it, so it's important that you know how. First of all, they will give you a triangle. I've labelled my triangle ABC. Now what does the triangle state? Well, before we get there, we need to know how to label a triangle. All of us will know that that angle is angle A. So if you remember your grade 8 and 9 geometry, the side opposite angle A is labelled baby A. The side opposite angle B is labelled baby B. And the side opposite angle C is labelled baby C. Now the sign will state if you take any side, which I've taken side A, and you divide it by sine of the angle opposite it, it will be equal to any other side, in this case B, divided by sine of the angle opposite it, or equal to C divided by sine angle C. So basically any side divided by the sine of the angle opposite it is always the same in a triangle. Now that's one way to write the sine rule. Another way to write the sine rule is to flip it over. So sine angle A over the side opposite it is the same as sine angle B over B, which is the same as sine angle C over C. Now how do we prove it? Well, first of all, in an exam, they'll never ask you to prove that the three are equal. Well, I hope they don't. They generally give you one particular set that you have to prove. So in this case, I've chosen to prove that sine angle A over A is equal to sine angle B over B. Now, the most important thing is when they give you something to prove, you need to know how to set up the picture. They generally don't give you a picture in the exam, so you would need to draw one. But where do you label A, where do you label B, and where do you label C? It does matter because it matters how you're going to proceed. So, I use the rule that if they're using sine angle A and sine angle B, then those are the two angles that I label on the bottom of my triangle. So then I will label the bottom AB and the top C. So if they were saying sine of P and sine of Q, then I would label PQ at the bottom. Now let's begin this proof. It's very easy. First of all, we're going to construct the perpendicular height, which I've labelled H. So there's my perpendicular height. I've labelled the point at the bottom where the perpendicular height, height hits AB. I've labelled that point D. I've also chosen to label in my sides. The side opposite angle A is A, and the side opposite angle B is B. Now if you look at the triangle on the left, which is called triangle ACD, Sine of angle A will be equal to. Now the definition of sine in a right angle triangle, and triangle ACD is right angled, is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So in this case, it will be the height over B. Now I can rewrite this using making H the subject of the formula by saying H is equal to B sine A, just by multiplying by B on both sides. Now if I look at the triangle on the right, which is BCD, I can do a similar idea. What is sine B? Well, it's opposite over hypotenuse, which is B over A. Now again, I can rewrite this as height equals A sine B. But the height in this triangle is the same thing. So whether you work it out one way or another way, you must get the same answer. So height equals height, which means this formula for height and that formula for height must be the same thing. So B sine angle A equals A sine angle B. Now all I need to do is divide by B on both sides, so I can cancel my B, and then divide by A on both sides, so I can cancel my A. So this can be re rewritten as sine angle A over A equals sine angle B over B. Now in this example, that means that my proof is done. However, if that asked you for A over sine A equals B over sine B, so if that put the sides at the top, I would prove this exactly the same way, and then I would just add on an extra line, so that you may flip both of the fractions around. Now let's look what this looks like in an example. So example number one, you've given a triangle, PQR, with some measurements in the triangle, 8 centimeters and 62. Notice I've done them in red because they're a pair. PQ is opposite angle R, so they're a pair, and then 48 degrees is angle Q. Now the question says, determine the length of PR. Now you will be able to recognize that you should use the sign rule because the sign rule involves two sides and two angles. And always the side and the angle have to be in pairs. So in this case we have one pair in red 
and we have 48 in blue, which means we can calculate the pair 48 is opposite to RP. So we can calculate RP. So we're trying to calculate baby Q. So we can set up our equation. Now our equation could be sine Q over Q equals sine R over R. Specifically chosen because R and R are the pair that I knew. Now this would be a silly format for me to use. Simply because I'm looking for baby Q. So therefore to set it up so that baby Q is on the bottom is just going to make work for myself. So it's better for me to use the flipped around version. So whenever you're trying to find a side, try and use the side, try and use the formula where the sides are on the top. Now what I'm going to do is substitute. Q is opposite 48 and 8 is opposite 62. Now all I need to do is multiply by sign 48 on both sides and I've got my answer. So it's fairly simple. So let's look at example number 2. What happens if you're given any triangle, I've labelled KLM, and I've labelled in a pair in blue, so there's a side and it's opposite angle, so immediately I'm thinking sine rule, and then I've given you another side. Now this means you can find the opposite angle for the 10 millimeters, and that hopefully is the question. Now in this case I've decided to be able to make it a bit more difficult. I've decided to ask you for angle M. Now angle M isn't opposite LK. However, 10 is opposite angle K. So if I can find angle K, I can do sum of angles in a triangle to find angle M. So always remember, if you know two angles, you can find the third. So I've deliberately set it up with sine angle K at the top, so that it's easier to set up, equals sine angle K over K equals sine angle L over L. So I'm going to substitute my 10, my 33, and my 17, and I'm going to multiply by 10 on both sides to get an answer for sine angle K. Now keep all the decimal places on your calculator because we're going to use the reciprocal of sine, not the reciprocal, the inverse operation of sine to find the angle. So I'm going to use shift sine on my calculator to calculate angle K as 18,69 degrees. Now as I said already, this means it's very easy to find angle M. I can do 180 degrees minus my two angles because of my reason, sum of angles in a triangle. So this is going to be quite a section for you to focus on using your geometry reasons. There's going to be a number of times when we'll use geometry reasons. So this is a very easy theorem to, to prove, a very easy theorem to remember. Um, so please make sure you study it. Good luck.